Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of Sunday Brunch. Thank you so very much for joining us today. Um, we're going to be talking about something pretty important and something that's been threatening innocent lives, sometimes on a daily basis in some regions more than others. Uh, and that's gun violence. So, Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidna. Alaikum Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Thank you so much for being with us again. My pleasure. Uh, so, we're going to talk about gun violence today and how it's affecting so many lives. And it's so unfortunate because we have all these countries that have progressed with their law regarding guns and firearms. And we see the results so clearly that, you know, less casualties, less fatalities. And then we have some other countries like the States just doesn't want to back down on its laws against guns and like shootings and massacres and suicides every day on the news and it's so heartbreaking so i'm just trying to figure out what exactly is going on i decided to uh dedicate uh an entire lecture or session yeah to this topic and i think it's it's not even enough once the uh christchurch uh mosque shooting occurred in New Zealand in Such a 2019 tragedy. where I think 50 some people died in two mosques and uh, I don't know if it's just me but guns are extremely dangerous especially guns of that caliber and they really shouldn't be at the hands of anybody including including uh, the law enforcement you know sometimes I believe that law enforcement can also lose their temper, can also make mistakes, and Absolutely, you know, yeah. they'll they'll end up killing fifty people instead of one or two people. Yeah. And we hear and and read on the news that you know sometimes some police officers and law enforcement people killed someone by mistake, or they thought someone was threatening them, and they ended up killing them, but the person was not a threat to them. And that's just by a normal 9mm gun. Imagine if now they had a huge automatic rifle and they start shooting. Opening fire on civilians. Um, so, I mean, that was one of the most eye-opening events of the year 2019, you know, where more than 50 people that were going to pray, uh, you know, they had no harm, no danger, they, they weren't doing anything wrong, were killed by... Um, malicious people and that happens a lot um, in the year 2000 to the year 2014 and 14 years there were six mass shootings in Germany three in Canada two in Finland but 133 in the United States of America good God um, you'd think they get the hint though and that's a big problem that's a big problem so you know? from year 2000 till 2014 and 14 years 133 mass shootings uh, we've had a mass shooting every two months a mass shooting yeah. which like means more than three four five ten people being killed a lot more than that um i mean a lot of people in the u.s no longer feel safe sending their kids to school to school exactly which is so um, ironic yes you and, think your child would be safe and it's, there. it's very it's very saddening because uh, schools are meant to be a place of safety for children and learning and growing and progressing this is where you're supposed to be happy right exactly and uh building character not thinking of the next moment a random person's going to barge through the door and just stick a gun at your face so i think i personally think the first responsibility is the responsibility of the people to save themselves their families their children and their country and their environment and two it is the government, a responsible government. What is a government? You know, that's a very important question to ask. What is the job of the government? Is it just to spend a billion dollars to get elected? And then once they're elected, they push the agenda of big companies that are pharmaceutical companies, 
gun production companies? Is it you know to sell trillions of dollars of weapons to the world so that people can kill one another and we get rich? Or is it is it a role of being like the father of the household where mm-hmm. you're merciful, you're compassionate. Actually governing. You're also wise and you're governing, yeah. you know. Guns are extremely... And, es- and especially now, there are houses of worship and minorities being subject to hate crimes. Just in, in, in the Christmas New Year season, many houses of worship, many minorities were subject to hate crimes, getting killed, getting attacked by guns. Um, I want to say this. With this, I think we have to conclude. Um, this reminds me of the fact that Kofi Annan, in a statement, wrote that the fairest governor in human history was Ali ibn Abi Talib. I, I'm not saying this as a Muslim. I'm not saying this as a follower of Amir al-Mu'mineen. But I'm just saying he was an exemplary figure in history, right? And revered by millions of people. I think we can learn a big lesson from Amir al-Mu'mineen. Um, specifically from one of his sermons of Nahj al balagha where he talks about his armed forces. What is the job of the armed forces? Are they supposed to attack people and invade countries and, and, and create wars and sell weapons? Or, or is their job to secure the people? Defend them. To defend them against the enemies. Now, Amir al-Mu'mineen has a beautiful statement. He says, I've called you to uh, assemble your armed forces and the winter and you say it's cold and the summer and you say it's hot i've called you so many times and you you've become cowardly that's not what we're discussing then he says amir al-mu'minin says and i have heard that the troops of the enemies have entered al-anbar al-anbar is in a as in a place as a place in iraq today yeah, yeah. and they've killed its governor hassan ibn hassan al-bakri then amir al-mu'minin says وَقَدْ دَخَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَى الْمَرْأَ الْمُسْلِمَةِ Now this is the result of the armed forces not doing their jobs. They enter, the army enters onto the Muslim woman. وَأُخْرَ الْمُعَاهَدَةِ And the other of non-Muslim faith. A Christian, a Jewish woman, or a non-Muslim woman. Living in Islamic country, in an Islamic country under the protection of Islam. وَأُخْرَ الْمُعَاهَدَةِ فَيَسْلُبُ مِنْهَا قَلَائِدَهَا وَحِجْلَهَا and they, they take away her 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 earrings, earrings and her, her jewelry. Place, yeah. And then she starts begging for mercy. Imam Ali says, if a man, if a Muslim man dies out of sorrow and sadness because of this, I wouldn't blame him. This is the saddest thing that Amir al-Mu'mineen could have, uh, could have accepted. And he says, if you die out of sadness that a Muslim woman or a non-Muslim woman under your protection is being harassed, how they take her jewelry away from her. They take her, 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 her earring away from her. So the job of the armed forces is to protect the people. And the job of the governor is to be like Amir al-Mu'mineen. He does not differentiate between the Muslim and the non-Muslim. The non-Muslim. He said, a woman who's subject to hate and mind you, the Muslims were the ones, the rebels were also Muslims. So Amir al-Mu'mineen here says we have to stand with the weak. This is the job of, of wise governance. Not to entice hate. Right. Not to say things that minorities are in jeopardy. Not to say things like, oh, Islam is the problem. And feel the Islam conflict. hates yeah. us. Or say things against, for example, the Hispanics or other minorities. You know, this creates hate. And hate then leads to violence. And since there are guns, well, it's going to be very easy to take people, innocent lives away. Uh, so inshallah, this show and this, this brief discussion we had would raise more awareness towards fighting this, um, this horrible time bomb that's waiting in the corner to take innocent lives. Like you said, thank you so much for your time, Sayyidina. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You've been watching Sunday Brunch. Don't forget to share your suggestions and your comments with us uh, to improve this show. Until the next episode of Sunday Brunch, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.